Hemoglobin is a protein that's found in red blood cells. Its function is to carry oxygen from the lungs to the cells and then carry the waste carbon dioxide from the cells back to the lungs where it can be expired into the atmosphere. Now, sugar in your blood attaches itself to this hemoglobin so that the hemoglobin is now known as glycated hemoglobin and that is the HbA1c. So this glycated hemoglobin can be measured in your blood. The more sugar you have in your blood, the more of it will attach to the hemoglobin and the higher the HbA1c levels will be. This glycation, that is the attachment of the sugar to the hemoglobin molecules, is irreversible. Once they attach, they don't come off. The only way that this glycated hemoglobin can be removed from the circulation is when the red blood cell is destroyed. And red blood cells have an average lifespan of three to four months. The HbA1c levels are given as percentages. That would be the glycated hemoglobin over the total hemoglobin times 100. So how is this test done? A blood sample is required to do an HbA1c estimation. There are no special preparations involved. You don't have to fast. It can be taken at any time of the day or night. Your HbA1c levels cannot be zero, otherwise you'd be dead. Everybody has some degree of glycated hemoglobin in their blood. The normal values are less than 5.7%. From 5.7 to 6.5%, that's the pre-diabetic level. And above 6.5%, that is taken to be the diabetic level. This is an average. It includes the rise in blood sugar you get after eating and the other causes of increase in blood sugar. So you can't compare it directly to your fasting blood sugar values. In diabetes, the HbA1c levels are often used to assess how well you're responding to treatment over time. So treatment goals for young patients would be less than 6.5%. For the general population, less than 7%. For elderly and sick patients, less than 7.5%. For very old and very fragile patients, less than 8 The goals tend to be lower for younger patients because the higher the blood sugar, the more likely they are to develop complications. So you want to stave off the development of those complications for as long as possible. Your aim should be to bring down your HbA1c levels to as close to the normal range as possible. And you need to do this without experiencing frequent episodes of hypoglycemia. Your blood sugar shouldn't be crashing all the time just because you're trying to achieve a specific number. Having Frequent episodes of very low blood sugar has its own set of complications and these include death. The HbA1c test is not a perfect test. In conditions like hemolytic anemia and sickle cell anemia, the HbA1c may be very low. Iron deficiency anemia can also affect the HbA1c values. Likewise, liver disease and kidney disease. A recent blood transfusion, severe blood loss will affect the HbA1c. Another limitation with the HbA1c is that it is an average. You may see an HbA1c that looks great on the surface, but it doesn't reflect the peaks and the crashes of the blood sugar. You may have someone whose blood sugar is just fluctuating gently up and down. Then you may have someone else whose blood sugar swings up and then drops, swings up and then crashes. Because it's an average, the peaks will balance out the troughs. So this person whose blood sugar is swinging wildly up and down may end up with a very similar HbA1c to the person whose blood sugar has just been trending gradually up and down, just fluctuating gently.